of here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little dial right there. So oh, that's brighter. That's going to make okay. the screen brighter or less brighter. So now I can't see it. And now I can't see it. But someplace in the middle, I can see it. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we will go over all this screen. But one of the first things you notice is down here in the bottom corner, it says rope release. So if I put my finger on it and hold it, that allows the rope to come out and back in. And when I take my finger off of it, it oh. stops. Okay. So that's one thing you're for sure going to want to know. And I always hold on to the rope release, especially if I've got hooked on to something. Because uh, if I don't, it's going to do that. And then it yanks on the thing. And it doesn't usually hurt, but it usually scares the snot out of somebody. and makes them think you don't know what you're doing. And uh, if you're acutely in pain, sometimes just that little tug hurts. So whenever I move it, I always want to have a hold of it so I can slow the movement of that. Okay, so our, our Saunders traction, they go on a little bit different. We're going to go over three different machines. We're going to go over this one and then the last two by the window mm. because a lot of clinics still have the older, this is brand new, traction machine and a lot of facilities, you know, they last forever and why why get a new one right. if your old one works when you're going to, it's going to cost you two grand, why go out and buy two grand when you're one that you've had for 20 years still works. So you will still see those. And we ask our advisory board every time they come and they say, yes, we still, this, we still, we still use our old one. It works fine. So we're not going to go buy a new one. So that some of the times the harnesses go on differently. So this harness goes into here. And so I got to pick it up and raise it up and get click in so that it stays in there. To get it out, I got to push up to get it out. You heard a click in there. So now that things clicked in. Okay. I will never have a patient in my machine unless they have the kill switch. Um, stop button. People, some people didn't like the word kill. Um, so when that person pushes it, it stops everything and starts beeping. And it won't stop beeping until I touch it. So it's going to stop pulling and release the person. So. The second you start doing anything that the patient could construe as potential traction, <clears throat> give them the stop button and then they, they feel a little bit more in control of things. Because it is a little disconcerting to have someone have a machine that they know could pull a whole bunch of weight against something that hurts, right? You're not in here unless you hurt. So, well, I guess there's some of the hypermobile people are, are going to be in here. All right, so he's going to be my, my patient. Mm -hmm. All right, Mitzi's going to rock it out. <laughs> All right, so if you'll lay down, and we're going to go for your mat to be roughly there. And so I've got the pillow here by your legs. Comfy. You good? Mm -hmm. I'm good. All right. I'm going to go ahead and give you the kill button. So if any time during this you're not comfortable or if it's hurting you or whatever, you just push that. Okay? It. And it's going to stop. Um, so we talked, or the, in lecture, talked about the position of the head. So did that make sense? Whether not your neutral or um, so upper or lower neck. So we're not worried in the, in the, in the lumbar we're going to talk about do we want to pull them in flexion or we want to pull them in extension. We're not thinking flexion and extension in the neck. All we're thinking is traction. So if I'm trying to do traction to the upper one C123 nerve roots, it's going to be a neutral. And if I'm going to do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, spaces, I'm going to be at a slight angle, right? So if I cross over, your test may say patient has C123456 hypomobility. What are you going to pick? Um, flexion. You're going to pick angled because more of them are below that than above them. So it's not flexion, it's angle? I, I prefer to use angle, slightly angle. I don't know. Flexion just... 
implies to me that, okay. which mm -hmm. I'm not going to be okay. way down. So mm -hmm. I don't, that might just be semantics. Mm -hmm. So what do we want to do with Ms. Mitzi? Are we going to angle her or are we going to do our neutral? Well, you That's had your car wreck. Issues. What the issues did you have with your neck from your car wreck? Is it upper or lower? So notice that when I start raising this thing up, it's, it started pushing back into the machine and now it's going to come out. Oh, okay. So I usually will try to get the person, I'll have them sit until, since we hadn't decided yet what we were going to do. Um, so if you don't mind maybe sitting up for a second, and that's the worst way to set someone up because it hurts <laughs> and they just... So you want that to be perfectly straight? So I want it pretty, I mean it's... Pretty straight. I want it pretty straight. What do you think? His list? It doesn't look straight. It doesn't look straight. Need to go up. Which part are you going by? So we're going to do a new one. I'm going to go an angle of fold. Okay. So a little more. The metallic part. All right. That's that it? Mm -hmm. That's pretty straight. All right. So now can you, now then we need to pull your hair out of the way so that it's not, so that your neck is against the skin, or the skin is against the, machine. All right. Another thing we want to do is we want to, we're going to put a strap across her forehead. So we like to protect our machine from her and her from our machine. So I pulled you guys all a little paper towel here <laughs> that you can use. And this is nice and soft. <laughs> no, we like, can yeah. use to, to not have her pushing up against my vinyl that could have been on a dozen other people. Oh, oh that's going to be That'll be fun when you pull it up. I like how you strap on shower. somebody into an electric chair, you know, how they do their lethal injections on TV. I know. Okay, so when, uh, when, uh, we're a pleasant bite. When we do this, before we start our traction, we've gone over contraindications, right? What are our contraindications to cervical traction? Well, possible pregnancy. Oh, yeah. For Fracture. women, let's um, see, claustrophobia, joint instability. If you were told not to move. If you were told not to. Or if you had an acute or flare-up or inflammation that just happened. Okay. So sure. systemic. How long ago was your? GERD, I would say GERDS is a oh. precaution oh, yeah, because yeah. the person may be able to lay COPD. flat. So COPD you have to ask them, GERD. are you going to be able to lay flat for? 15 to 10 to 15 minutes. Recent sprain or strain? Yeah, mm -hmm. Recent, okay. What's within a year? The, the how long is recent? Fusion. Spinal fusion. Fusion, fusion. fusion. that's what it was. Fusion. Or flu like symptoms, feeling bad that particular day. Um, there was. So and then that vertebral artery occlusion. issue. Occlusion. Okay. Uh, are they going to know so what you're that pregnant? Is? Pam will really go into, you need to say, is there any possibility you may be pregnant? Because there's all sorts of people that could potentially be pregnant that weren't trying to be pregnant and don't even know they are currently pregnant because they haven't, they weren't trying, so... Uh, so, you did, did you pass our contraindications? I didn't have a tumor. Do you have a tumor? Do you have any malignancies that you have? COPD. Not that yeah. I know of. She said. And does the tumor and infection apply to the whole, yeah. entire spine regardless 